morning and welcome to the last artist focus of the spring session. My name is Corin Little and I'm the organizer of Active Sight. And I'm here today with Mikel Zamama, who is uh, residing in Tel Aviv, Israel. I, we are coming to you through StreamYard, which is uh, through a server. Um, but I am residing, I'm transmitting this uh, service, residing on the ancestral homelands of the Council of Three Fires, the Adawa, the Ojibwe, and the Patawatomi peoples. Out of sight, you know, as an organization is spelt S-I-T-E, sight as in place and we're really thinking about the body in place and these invisible relationships that um, really situate the body and tell and kind of um, unpack that and today in my conversation with Mikael we'll be having we'll really be going deep into these interconnections and these relationships uh, with body insight. Mikkel Samma creates works at the intersection of dance, performance, theater, and visual arts, addressing the fundamental condition of performance, situating a body in the public realm. Rooted in body and movement, her work moves between the gallery the theater and the public space, exploring the different dynamics by which these spaces are framing the body. By using mass consumption objects, site-specific practices, text, sound elements, she interrogates the, in the tension between the static visual image and the live image and the breathing body. Samama's work was presented and commissioned by the Chocolate Factory Theater in New York, Aspect Ratio Gallery in Chicago, Pitach Tikva Museum, the Curtain Up Festival in Tel Aviv, and Theater de, de la Ville in Paris as part of Chicago in Paris in 2015. In Chicago, her work has also been presented as part of the In Time 2016 6018 North Gallery, Out of Sight in 2015, Rapid Pulse Festival in 2014, and TBSO3 at the Fibrillator Gallery and Expo Chicago in 2014. Julia Seeser Gallery, uh, Sector 2337, Manor Contemporary, Lynx Hall, Tri Triangle, and the Northwestern University. In New York, she has presented her work at New York Live Arts, Movement Research at Judson Church, Performance Mix Festival, Dixon Place, CPR, Ches Bushwick, Priska um, C. Jushka Gallery, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, among others. Samama received her MFA from the performance program at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, which is where I met uh, Mikael. And she is a recipient of the SAIC 2013 to 2015 New Artist Society Scholarship Award, the Edis Semi-Finalist Fellowship Award, and the James Nelson Raymond Fellowship. So welcome, Mikael. It's wonderful to be here with you today. How are you? Hi, thank you, Karen. I am great, thanks. <laughs> it's a lot of uh, memories, you know, when you're reading that, it's like bring me back into, into the past a little bit, New York and Chicago. Yeah, and here. So good evening for my and <laughs> and today is Saturday, April the tenth, and we've been through a year of the pandemic. What is the situation in Tel Aviv, Israel, right now, Mikael? Um, 
you know, it feels that uh, like slowly going back to normal. Um, and uh, yeah, like walking and uh, <laughs> rehearsing again. Um, in you know, this is from my life, but of course, you know, I feel that we all shaked so much uh, physically and emotionally. Um, but uh, it seems like it's yeah, maybe it's getting uh, better, and we will get out of it soon, and and maybe not. Like it's hard to say. Yeah. It's confusing. Um, I'm just, I'm working all the time somehow. So that was also the strange thing to me that I was at the studio and we started to work on this performance in the park, like outdoors and uh, no shows, no performances, but yes, in creating. So that was, I think, important. Yeah. So we're going to start by sharing um, a piece that you did in 2018. Uh, called Keterplastic. Keterplastic, yeah. It's a name of a company. It's 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 the brand of those like plastic uh, chairs that uh, I work with in this piece. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's and it's uh, yeah, it was at the Musrara Festival, and um, the other performer with me is Omer Uziel. Um, yeah. So. Okay. We'll talk about Let me uh, share the screen. In Jerusalem, Musrara neighborhood. Now let me, I think I have to.
So uh, this next piece that we're going to share is, I um, want to introduce this next one. Yes. Um, we yeah. Can... yeah, it's part of, um, so the name of the whole project is Family Event, and it was Zoom performance, um, took place in December as part of Diver Festival, and there was like four nights, one after the other, that uh, I did, uh, or actually five, but um, um, performance at my home, at my uh, apartment. Uh, each one was in a um, different space at the house, and I also uh, invited in different ways uh, family members. Um, yeah, so let's see it, and then we can talk. So the, the first one was uh, actually... Uh, around the table. The second one was uh, at the fridge, as you could see maybe, uh, the storage and then the wall. So that were like the, the different spaces. ואני לא יודעת אם ראיתי יותר טוב או פחות טוב, אבל לפעמים ראיתי יותר חד. הוא שאל אם אני רואה יותר טוב על הרקע של האדום או הרקע של הירוק, והוא הראה לי עיגול מקווקב כזה, ו... והייתי צריכה להגיד אם הקווים שווים או שיש כאלה יותר עבים. זה הראה לי צילום ממש מוזר של העיניים שלי, נורא מקרוב ובגדול כזה. ואז הוא יצא שנייה מהחדר כי מישהו קרא לו ואני יצאתי את הטלפון וצילמתי את העיניים שלי על המסך. ונזכרתי שהלכתי לעשות איזה טיפול לכבוד היום הולדת שלי והדבר הראשון שעשיתי, עוד לפני שהטיפול התחיל בכלל, היה להוריד את המשקפיים. ואמרתי למטפלת שזה כאילו להוריד את קו ההגנה הראשון והיא צפקקה. אחר כך שכבתי שם על הגב, והוצאתי קולות, ובכיתי, ודמיינתי שאנשים עומדים עליי ומסתכלים לי על הגוף שלי, למרות שרציתי להגיד גופה. ונזכרתי באמת בשני הניתוחים שהיו לי, שבסופם הוציאו לי מהרחם את שני הילדים שלי. בפעם הראשונה אני לא באמת יכולה להיזכר באופן מודע, כי הייתי מוקדמת לגמרי. הרדמה מלאה. אני לא באמת יודעת מה היה שם. בטח שכבתי כמו גופה. אבל כשהתעוררתי היה לי ילד בידיים, ואיזה אחות רחמניה לימדה אותי להניק. מי שאמרה לי אחר כך שזה כאילו לא הייתי בלידה שלי. ועד היום בא לי לבכות כשאני נזכרת בזה. בפעם השנייה דווקא הייתי שם, רק הבטן הייתה מורדמת, או החלק התחתון של הגוף אולי. הרגשתי שעושים לי שם דברים, אבל זה לא כאב. כשהוציאו אותו, אמרו לי שייתנו לי אותו, אבל אז הם לקחו אותו, כי הוא היה באיזה מצוקה, 
ולמרות שהכל היה בסדר בסוף, אז הרופא אמר לי תוך כדי שהוא סוגר את הבטן עם איזה חוט, או מה שהם לא עושים את זה, אז הוא אמר לי, הוא אמר, היה חילוץ קשה. היה חילוץ קשה. ודמיינתי את השוחות במדבר, מבצעים כאלה, ומסוקים, ורעש, ומלחמה. אז ככה הוא חילץ אותו. ואני שכבתי שם. אני לא זוכרת אם כזה קשרו לי את הידיים, זה בטח רק הרגיש ככה, כי לא יכולתי לזוז. הוא גם שאל אותי באותה הזדמנות, הרופא, אם אני רוצה להיכנס שוב להיריון. לא ידעתי מה לענות לו.
חלמתי עלייך לפני איזה יומיים. אנחנו כל מיני אנשים בבריכה, את יושבת על שפת המים ואני בפנים, ואחד הילדים שלך, בטח אדם, במים, ואני מודה לזה שהוא במים, ואז פתאום אנחנו קולטים שהוא לא שם, ואת קופצת ראש ומוציאה אותו מהמים במהירות על, את מניחה את הגוף שלו מחוץ לבריכה, הוא כחול והעיניים שלו בולטות ונראה שהוא לא נושם, את מתחילה לילל שהוא מת. אני מושך אותו ממך, דופק לו על החזה והופך אותו, והוא מתחיל להשתעל ולהקיא, ואני מוציא לו את הקיא מהפה, ואז הוא חי, והכול בסדר. Let me just do something with the audio here. So I want to start by asking you a question about uh, these intimate narratives, you know, and as part of my research uh, from uh, one of the projects I've done, I, I learned that 50% of women giving birth around the world have a negative first experience of giving birth and you share that personal narrative of you know giving birth to both your your son and your daughter and i'm wondering if you know what your uh, thoughts are Well, I'm wondering how you're thinking about this image of the mother within the context of your performances and weaving these, this, into, this personal narrative into the structure of your performance. Um, you know, when I look at it now, <laughs> I think it's this work, this, this a Zoom uh, performance, Um, those like four nights, it's so much about multitasking. <laughs> And I think this is how you can also describe the being a mother. <laughs> um, so it was very much in a way, I mean, and now, you know, now I can be more reflective about that. It, it was about that. It, it's also a reflection about that time. It's very time specific. We were all, all of us, like really all of us at home, uh, locked down, um, uh, you know, being uh, with the kids, like I called it, like the, name, the title of it is family event. I think COVID-19 is very much a family event, not the way we usually think of events. But um, so I, you know, I, I also like to choose titles that are some sort of conventions or, you know, it's. Um, you imagine something, uh, one thing, but it's actually another thing. So here the family event was all of us together in a small house, in a small apartment. Um, 
And also many people started to reorganize the, the house. And, and, you know, like, so I, I, and, and I feel that, again, speaking of multitasking, like the, the house is always a mess. Like I always need to, to clean and to, you know, to organize the mess. Uh, and it, it's like never ending story. And, and I wanted to use that. And also, but the mess in terms of like, to really use the not so pleasant materials of life. And I think this is part of what I feel about, you know, being a mother and, you know, all those layers of, of being a mother, being an artist, uh, trying to have career, to work, to be with the kids, to think of education, like all of that. And then we also have a very private event because my son was diagnosed with the type 1 diabetes during the COVID-19, like in July 2020. And um, and that was like, you know, like this thing of our family inside, this thing of, of the, the, the world, like, so something very intimate and very local, but also something so universal. So it's also always part of what I try to work on, like, you know, the, the intimacy, but also something that is very universal, also in terms of materials. Um, and and the way I built this 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 performance, like I I told you that people asked me who who was the cameraman, and I said it, it was my laptop, and I used this uh, you know when I use my iPhone for to to switch the on the the recording, um, and and I needed to do this thing with my body and also to to use the, to to work on Zoom uh, on the image. So the whole thing, it was very low tech, but again, a lot of multitasking. And I, I didn't know, I didn't want anybody else to do it because it was like, you know, like <laughs> being the mother, being like that. I'm also a control freak, I guess, but this is, a, yeah. It's very interesting, actually, the amount of uh, multitasking we have to do just in order to create a live performance. I mean, it's just a huge uh, setup. And I, I was very interested in that piece because you you broke it down into four sections. Um, there's a section called story, there's a section called wall, and there's a couple of other sections. And this idea of you're thinking about the image and your relationship you know, your, your performances are very visual. And even in this performance that we just saw, you know, there's the, you're, you're going, it's these close-ups of these intimate spaces. You know, in the last part, the whole performance occurs on a wall. And how are you thinking about this um, re-envisioning of the image, you know, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, because I think this is something that you've really kind of taken control of the narrative in that way. You mean in the Zoom, or? Well, I think it's, um, I think in your earlier performance work as well, you know, you were, you, you've always, you know, actually the Zoom performance, you know, I saw a lot of previous performances yeah. incorporated into the score, the structure, like uh, the fridge moment, you know, was similar to a piece that I saw you do at 68 North, for instance, in a, in a cupboard. And actually, I think the first performance I saw was a very impromptu piece at SAIC in the in the performance space where you just kind of, you created this sound the the metal sync and made music with it, and it was this very simple gesture with an everyday action. But it became uh, musical. It re reverberated through our bodies, and so thinking about the image of a performance, 
and how you're working with that image in the context of a performance. Yeah, so, you know, my friend told me, you're not a choreographer, you are a photographer. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, at some point I realized, like, you know, um, it's, it's now it's years ago, but that I'm very much into the visual image. Um, and yet it was always important to me to make live works. Um, <clears throat> Because I think there's something in me, like I don't, I think the image, the visual image is so powerful, as we know. And I think part of what the live uh, performance does is uh, that it, it interrupts it, it, it uh, collapses it sometimes, this, you know, this transformation of the image. Like, and you think you're there, but then it's something else already. Um, and I love this um, possibility of um, not uh, let you, you know, you as an audience and also myself to stay in a comfort zone with the image. Um, so I think this is a lot of what I try to do is, is in a way not to please with the image and, and to, to stay in some uncomfortable, um, uh, wow. Well, uncomfortable space. Um, but I also feel that uh, it's always some sort of tension. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. What is going, what's the noise behind you? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a celebration. Nothing to worry about. Um, I used to eat. Um, yeah, so some, somehow the tension between uh, um, the, the visual image and, and sculpture and, you know, um, in that sense, like working with a body. Um, yes, I, I think that you talked about um, this idea of destabilize, of the destabilizing the image. And I think this, um, this notion of um, the, you know, you talked about it, we talked about it in the introduction, you know, this um, like fluidity between the home, the cupboard, the sink, the sidewalk, the gallery, the home, the white wall. There is just in the physical structure of your performances, you're, you're weaving these everyday spaces together very fluidly. And, and, you know, there is the mirror of the actual um, narrative that weaves in and out of these performances, the public, the private, you know, and there, there's, um, again, you know, very much a fluidity in the narrative, in the textual layer. So, why is it important for you to to go to these spaces and to embrace this complex these complex structures in your in your performances but they don't appear complex they can be you know very simple yeah i think um I think I like to, you know, I, I work with, I think all of us, but I think a lot about conventions, you know, in each uh, space or in each um, um, place or, uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 even if it's, it's like public space or um, our stage or my home, like what is the, the convention? And in a way, how can I um, work with it like straightforward? <laughs> And how can I um, be, I guess, poetic about it? Um, for example, if, if we talk about this, this walk with the chairs, the plastic chairs, so first of all, it's a, it's a cultural symbol in Israel, this keter plastic, this uh, plastic crown. Um, you see those chairs like everywhere, but especially in events. 
It can be in family events. It can be also, you know, outside the, the porch or um, uh, around the table. Um, but it can, but you see it in every uh, public ceremony. Um, and and also usually, you know, the chairs are not the issue. The chairs are from the background. Like it's it's the chairs of the audience. And I was somehow uh, somehow I had this you know um, idea of of what happened when I give the chairs the the stage, uh, but of course outside and also and and then I I was I I worked um, on it in this residency in Jerusalem at Musrara neighborhood uh, where we showed it as part of a festival. But I started to work there um, day after day, and I was nine months pregnant. <laughs> And I realized that, uh, you know, people, I, I, I dragged the chairs, you know, I was dragging them. And I, I also, I love the sound of the dragging on the concrete, um, you know, on the road. And, and then people start to ask me if they can help me because they just saw me like, you know, nine months pregnant woman with pile of chairs, let, let's help you. And it became also about, you know, me giving chairs to people to sit at, but also they helped me. So it became about giving hands, giving help. Um, um, and, and that was, it was all based on very simple action of just dragging chairs. And is it before the event? It's after the event? It's, at, it's this is the event? And then at some point we kind of stop poetically, but then there's, because it was a festival, there was actually another performance uh, happening and we started to give chairs to, so also transforming between um like you said before the, the role of the mother the role of, of the chair the the, um, the um, you know just like daily function of things and of me as well yeah um, and, and the things that are more poetic and the way it can um, all of a sudden be a sculpture or you know an image um yeah yeah when we were talking initially you talked about um this idea of your body being one foot in sculpture and one foot in photography you know and you know definitely thinking about these sculptural elements of the body um but you know within the, the context of the first performance that we showed today you know, it is in Jer Jerusalem the um, there is a moment where the chairs are lined uh, by the wall and people and it is a line adjacent to the wall and you've got chairs facing in opposite directions and then but by facing the chairs in opposite directions, it's like those kissing chairs. It becomes a moment that actually heightens engagement between the people that are sitting next to each other. So these, you know, thinking about these interstitial moments and working in public space, how does it impact your body as a performer? Do you have um, you know, a, a specific sensation after working in public space that is a physical transformation of the body? You talked about the reciprocity of, you know, with the people. I wonder how it impacts you as a performer. I, I, I always feel like, wow, what, what have I done to this space? Like now it's... <laughs> It's it's funny because it's almost like be, you know between like something that is all it's like the chair became this uh, uh, you know fetishized objects. Um, it's almost holy the way we carry them, um, but it's also like cheap chairs, um, uh, you know, dirty, and that's how I feel sometimes about the spaces and how what they did to my body. Like it's like. I, I can't believe I did that in this space <laughs> or, you know, something. Um, but um, b yeah, between feeling like that it's, it's, a, it's a dirty act, but also almost holy, like to give them all this attention. 
Um, and back to my body, um, I feel, I think that's, uh, um, you know, I, 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 I now, at some point in, in you know, in my uh, practice, I started to get into this thing of, of touch or to be more uh, sensational because, you know, I'm coming from dance and it was more about uh, creating movements, but creating, you know, um, as something that is a little bit from outside of the body. It's, it's more of like a visual image and then going into um, uh, the image, the, again, like, but then at some point I was like, yeah, but, but for me, the body, it's the, the, the main sense is actually touch. And this intimacy that you can create with touching, I always, you know, I come to a space and, and I look and, you know, I think visually, but I always like touch and I try to um, create a sound, you know, from, from carpets, from the wall, from the chairs to, um, and I smell and I taste if I can, you know, like it's, it's very much, um, uh, yeah, like going, you know, trying not to be just in the visual sense. Um, so yeah, I think intimacy is in a way a strong uh, description here. Um, and I think this idea of sensuality uh, really connects back to uh, this, this image of um, the mother as well within our society. Hilary Robinson, uh, the feminist philosopher and writer, has written about um, how we question the uh, and think about the image of the mother, and I think you know in your performances, you're really bringing your you're expanding this image through a central um, dialogue and discourse, and I wondered if you could. Uh, shared the the experience of doing out of light performance in 2015 where you mapped the corridor because i think there was an interesting reclamation of space that happened between your body and the sidewalk and you got more cheeky as the days went on and you know and I think it was interesting to watch the documentation of that, uh, how you became more emancipated through the through the experience. Can you talk about that and that? Yeah, I think it's uh, again it's this question of um, negotiation with the space and. Um, letting the space be space and object like yeah i feel it's always you know between body and space and object and and this negotiation and this um you know coming from israel uh, this question of territory is so much a part of your life of my life and um i feel that in a way it's also comes uh, from that like um, and being really immersed in the in the street, but also all of it being an object there, um, and but also letting the nuance nuances of the the street of Milwaukee Street to to appear at some point. Um, and I, what I remember from that experience um, is that it was very. Uh, dramatic in terms of like being also outside uh, performing without audience that I invited. It was like really this me and the streets and the people around um, that didn't know what I was doing and it was very early in the morning so people just went to work. Um, and yeah, again, this line between what is what is what, what is life, what is art how much am i part of it how much am i this you know i'm i'm I, i'm just this strange woman um and um kind of letting the the day because we did it like 
we started at seven and then the other day it was at eight and then it was at nine and kind of letting the, the day pass through my body and the temperature change and, you know, just, yeah, being in some sort of routine, but, um, but also performing. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. You know, we, we had, stu you know, we had stewards who were uh, with Mikkel as we, you know, because we are con concerned about public safety and the safety of our performers. Um, and also the, the stewards are there to engage the public in a dialogue. So I was stewarding uh, Mikkel's performance on the first day. And I, I was hypnotized by your work because you were, and I saw, and I saw other members of the public just stop and be completely captivated. And there was this one woman rushing to work. She was in such a rush. And there you were moving in slow motion down the street, mapping, you know, again, this sense of sensual movement of slow observation and and I was on my bike and I just walked slowly home, you know, because the embodied, your embodied presence within the, on the sidewalk, you know, transmitted. And you're working, a lot, lot of your current work is in Tel Aviv or in J Jerusalem. How is your, how are those public performance transmitting into this space, do you think? Do you have thoughts about that? You know, I just, I know what I, I guess I know what I try to do. <laughs> You know, it's like, um, it just stuck to my head now when I saw the, the documentation or it's, yeah, it's like the documentation of the Zoom. It's hard to say if it's a documentation because it was already kind of, uh, you know, video art. Um, 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 uh, tell me uh, it was a difficult rescue <laughs> of uh, giving birth, you know, like, and this military language. <laughs> Um, again, it's like some sort of convention in, in the streets of Tel Aviv and uh, Jerusalem, uh, and not just here, but um, I feel that, um, yeah, in a way, it's, it's, uh, uh, what I do is um, trying to, to also deal with that or, or somehow confront that. Um, and... Um, the, and, the kind of power relationships. It, it's in this is something I'm particularly interested in because um, you yourself are working in, you know, a, a war, a war zone, or a space that is next to a war zone on the border with Palestine, and you know, you talked about this idea of territories. And Alistair McClellan has been working in this militarized sit in the militarized city of Belfast for years, and in Chicago, out of sight, has been working in you know a city violated by systemic violence through you know multiple um, forces. So, how do you think public? performance is shifting the the dynamics of those spaces maybe the aura you know you do you think that it has a role to play in these in these militarized zones or these places where trauma is being is happening You know, I feel it's it's kind of I want to say like yeah, it's like um, 
uh, being human, but what is human, you know, because this is also human. <laughs> Everything is human. Um, so I think that for me, sometimes it's actually going into this, um, um, state of mind of actually something very delicate or very gentle or sometimes you know I, I like now I work on this um, piece that um, I'm uh, with another uh, choreographer with another dancer performer uh, we will be both of us actually I mean it's very related to what I did in Chicago and back then because we are going to be on the um, the road or on the street, on the concrete, on the asphalt, you know, like um, very low, um, low in terms of, you know, we are going to be very close to the ground and to do this, you know, it's um, uh, hard to explain movement, but uh, the, the score is very tight in a way. Um, but people can almost, you know, step on us. <laughs> They don't pay attention. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it, I feel that you need to be brave to do that in a way, to walk like this and also to be, again, on the dirty street. And uh, But also you put yourself in a very exposed um, and uh, vulnerable position. I think this is... A lot of it is, is part of it. It's like, uh, I don't feel vulnerable, but I do in my performances. I, I You know, I, it's like, it goes both ways. I feel sometimes very strong to do that, but I also feel, I, I know that I'm vulnerable and, and very exposed. And um, yeah, I think this is, this is the way it's uh, kind of uh, going to the public and, and uh, also just speaking about giving birth and, and about your uh, examinations. I think it's something like that. Um, bringing the body in a different way or not so much uh, conventional. Yes, and I think you, you mentioned the words hu humanizing. It, you know, it takes a lot of courage to work in public space and a lot of bravery. But once it, once you do, you kind of build up that courage, you know, yeah. you increase. And I saw that evolve in the, in the performance over time. Um, I want to put it up for questions. Uh, to the audience. So if you have a question for Mikkel, uh, please type it in the chat. And I think you shared something very interesting uh, yesterday about the, um, well, you know, how do you, how are you thinking about uh, let me go back to this question. In those situations, when you're working in public space and you're thinking about the reciprocity, how do you feel after a performance? Do you have like a physical transformation of the body that happens after a performance? Or how is it impacting you? Um, you know, I, for me, I feel that it's not so different to be in, like you call it public space. And I imagine that you think about more of like, you know, outdoor, outdoor space. Um, I feel that for me, the stage is also a public space because we are there as public. Um, the gallery actually can be something different because you, you come as an individual, but when you come to a performance, you know, a performance is already a collective, is, is always a collective experience. Even if it's one-on-one, -on -one, I feel that the, the shared history that we have and the, the, the reference is always for a group 
um, activity. So in that sense, and I, I always try to point that, like for me, it's important that um, even if it's on stage, I will um, meet you as if you come to my home. <laughs> you know, it's like, good evening, how are you? you know, like, or, so also I like to kind of, if there is a, if there are conventions, I like to kind of play with them and, and, and mix them. Um, for example, in the Zoom, uh, using this phrase of like, uh, I had this recording of like, good evening, please uh, turn off your phone, like using actually the convention of theater. But if it's in the theater, you know, I had this piece, uh, uh, the Chicken Memorial, it was on the, you know, here it was in, in, in Tel Aviv, it was on this big stage that I also remembered from my child, like the, the big stage of, of dance in Tel Aviv, the, the important one. And it was, it was, first of all, it was weird for me to work, but then I said, okay, stage is also site specific. And how do I use, how do I um, uh, react or, or uh, use it as an object? Like um, uh, the same exploration that I do with the street to do to the stage in a way. Um, and then I used the, the beginning was some, you know, the convention of, of speech uh, and the audience came in and I was already there and I was good evening. How are you? And kind of I try to to make some intimacy with each one, even if it's in the theater and it's impossible. Um, yeah. I think, you know, this idea of power. Or you talk about um, questioning conventions. I remember in one of the first performances, it, it might have been the first actually, it was at Lynx Hall, and you were um, you were performing naked, and you selected me to come and sit down next to, you know, and so. The no, I was uh, I was shaking your hand. Or oh, was it okay? And so again, this idea of touch, actually, that's. Um, but I think did you sit down? You sat down with the audience in that performance as well, or you rolled along the wall. No, that was a walling. But in this in this performance at Linksol, uh, uh, the name was uh, "What am I paying you for?" <laughs> um, it was I. The setup was that people could be in like the audience sitting and on stage. Like I wanted to it to be like part of you know stage, part of like gallery setting, and somehow we managed to create that. And then, yeah, like you're saying, like this shaking hand while I'm naked, very close to you with this bag on my head. It, it was, you know, also a, some sort of reference to, yeah, anyway, different stuff and, and like, um, um, yeah, like visual art uh, paintings and um, um, anyway, but, but it's the touch, but also it's a formal convention of like, you know, meeting. It's like intimate, but it's also formal. So this tension between being formal and being intimate, and um, yeah. And you know, it is also collapsing. It's thinking about these power, uh, like the idea of territories of power that exist within a social space and even just the, uh, the situation of power that exists in a theater between the stage and the performers and the audience and you know you're collapsing or you're and in collapsing the those hierarchies you're creating a sense of hu human you know humanity by saying you know, and you're also, by presenting your uh, naked body, because you do, you know, your naked body is uh, present in a lot of your works and in your collaborative works, 
Do you want to um, talk about the piece where you are engaging with the wall and the symbolisms and metaphors between the nudity and the symbol of the wall for you? Um, yeah, I think hierarchies is a, it's a good um, term here also. Because, you know, I like to also give myself some missions. Like it's, it's basically the score, but also like to do something very, um, you know, with a lot of concentration and as as if this is this is like my mission like i remember one piece when i was in my head i was um you know um um reciting or singing a song and i had to do it the whole time even though you didn't know that but it was part of the the state of mind of the performance that i had this uh, and here uh, on this walling thing <laughs> Um, and and uh, we started with hierarchies. I, I feel that it was um, part of it was just being um, between the wall and the floor. Like this is how it started. I will just try to be all the time touching. Like again, this the sense of touch and um, and tactility. Um, I let my body or allow my body to touch the specific space, the, the, this border, <laughs> this line between the wall and the floor with different parts of my body. Um, and that was like the, the premise, the frame to it. Um, and, and, and another thing was to be, uh, you know, again, coming from background of dance, to work horizontally and not vertically. Um, I just looked at the, you know, a, a pop L, the crawling um, works. You know, I think this is, a, I don't know if, if I had this reference uh, in my mind when I created that. I think it's, it came from a different, but then I, I, I very much related to, to that. To this thing of like being, I mean, of course he was on the street. Um, but but um, but so so being like in the white cube, and in a way be a, an image on the wall, uh, almost like you know two dimensional, almost like it's a painting of um, you know of a, of nude of of a naked woman. Uh, but then I'm actually live and moving there and um, and can touch the wall and can get an intimacy. And, and it was almost like the wall was a, another, uh, was my partner, you know, it was a duet. <clears throat> um, and, uh, and also I had this whistle in my mouth. That was also another thing, the sound of it, that was the constant sound of, of breathing. And that's something like you can close your eyes and you can, you know, be uh, uh, not attached to the visual thing, but you, if you're in the space, you hear the, the sound. Um, I'm actually just realizing that we time has sped away. I thought it was 40 minutes past, but it's already an hour. And I did, uh, I, I don't see any questions in the chat. So if you do uh, wish to type, ask Mikkel a question, uh, please pop it in the chat. But just to summarize um, some of the things that we've been speaking about today, um, Mikkel has talked about um, image and she has done this amazing uh, collaborative performance with Martine Vial um, at the beginning of last year with Arts of Science. Uh, it's really uh, about shaping and defining the image. And she's also played with that in the Zoom performance. So we'll share that, the link uh, with you all about the, for that piece. And I also wanted to 
And we've talked about how Mikkel is questioning convention and um, thinking about the territory of the body, the territory of a site, uh, specifically um, working in her local context of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. And, you know, the, the collapse that happens when we work in public space and how they're, you know, how through placing the body in public space, in performance, in dance, in movement, one is adding a humanity uh, to those spaces as part of the aura. Uh, so I think, you know, that was a very fascinating question. And it's also part of the questions that we're going to be discussing in the international convening that we're hosting on April 22nd to May 9th as part of the FLOW Symposium. So the we have two weeks of practice-based workshops uh, so people can study international performance artists. And we're, we're getting down to two slots in some of those workshops. So if you do want to study with Marilyn Awesome, Martin Vial, Dimple B. Shah, Kristen Hershusius, Callum Eccleston, or myself. There's a couple of slots available. And uh, we've also got 12 presentations by international performance artists. And I'm just going to play you a little video about that. for listening and tuning in to our last artist focus of the spring session. We'll be back in the fall. I do hope you will uh, participate in the international uh, convening we're having uh, with the Flow Symposium. Again, I will uh, link to that in the chat. And um, we just got a little... Um, we just got a comment from uh, one of her saying that uh, so appreciative of your poetic works. Thank you for sharing, uh, Mikhail. I think it was a great conversation today. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you very much, Karen. Bye. Bye, Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>